Hi, and welcome everyone to Whole Soul School and Foundation's Fireside Chats for September 2020. My name is Marie Moeller, and I am an author, intuitive, and co-founder of Whole Soul School and Foundation. I'm here with my co-host and co-founder, Lacey Frazier, who is a clinical psychologist by training and a practicing life coach and consciousness educator today. So I want to welcome everyone back to our inspiring Fireside Chats podcast. And first and foremost, I want to share our newly updated mission here, which is to empower people worldwide to engage the journey of personal transformation and to raise awareness and funds to provide tangible goods and resources to men and women releasing from prison. We continue to offer our engaging podcasts and weekly inspirational messages on social media platforms. And as many of our listeners know, we hold a core belief that the conversation and the connections we share here is the education. And we will soon be sharing more information about a new project to raise awareness and funds for people releasing from prison and beginning the next chapter in their lives of re-entering society and the world around them. So I find that very exciting, and I just want to share that with our listeners. It was a big journey to, you know, update and upgrade really what our mission is, what our focus is here, and, you know, what we're doing, which is to raise awareness through our podcasts and also raise awareness through these special projects that are going to touch people's lives who actually their lives have been impacted by incarceration um, and to give them a next step, right, and the support that they need. So I want to welcome Lacey to this conversation today. Welcome, Lacey. Hi, Marie. Hi. And this month, we wanted to get back to a bit of our fireside chats roots here. Yes. Right? And discuss a pillar of the personal transformation journey and therefore the hero's journey. We're going to be spotlighting today the essence of intuition. because Core pillar. Core pillar. A core pillar in the hero's journey one that I don't necessarily know that we've spotlighted really just by itself in a podcast. I don't think so. But it is a significant part of the hero's journey and the awakening process and this growing our self-awareness. And as we were talking about this topic of intuition and that inner guidance system, which is what we were referring to, we were looking for resources that might spark some inspiration in us for this conversation today. And we found a film, which is the personal guidance system, PGS, the movie. And we're going to bring some of the insights of that film into our conversation today. And I just wanted to start, Lacey, our conversation, and so our listeners can join a little bit of the energy of that film so they can understand what we're referencing. People can find that on the web, pgsthemovie.com. And a description of the film, it was produced by Bill Bennett, who is an Australian filmmaker. And this movie is detailing one man's search for a voice that saved his life. And this description comes directly from from the website. So while driving early one morning, Bill Bennett heard a voice which told him to slow down. He was approaching an, an intersection. He slowed down and a huge truck ran a red light, missing him by inches. If not for that voice, Bill would have been killed. He was determined to find out what that voice was, so he spent three years traveling the world interviewing experts on intuition, spanning the fields of science, religion, and spirituality. Bill discovered that intuition is part of a subtle energetic system that seeks to protect us and guide us along our life's journey so that we can achieve our true purpose and lead a life of fulfillment and contentment. He called it our PGS, our personal guidance system. And, you know, it really helps to illustrate these, you know, these sort of big topics because intuition is something that we've all probably heard about at some level in our journey. Some of us practice and engage it more than others, but intuition has been part of humanity's experience through the centuries. And yet, 
it's, it can be an interesting thing to try and put words to and define, right? Many people might describe what intuition is differently, and Bill Bennett clearly had that experience. And so as he is seeking the source of that voice, right? I mean, if you were him, you can imagine being very intrigued, number one, by something, something potentially miraculous. He doesn't use those words, but that voice saved his life. And he travels to all these different countries. He travels to Italy and Turkey and Bhutan and the U.S. and many other places around the world in his search for insight and understanding. And he's trained as a journalist and as a filmmaker. And he's not a particularly a religious man, but he wants to keep an open mind to make this discovery to uncover this understanding inside himself and gain this perspective. And so what's really fascinating is he makes this film using his intuition, practicing what he's trying to learn about, what he's trying to uncover. And so he listens to his guidance about what to do, who to speak to, who to reach out to, where to go. He's listening to his inner GPS, his personal guidance system, in order to make this film about the inner guidance system. And I think that's brilliant, right? I think it's absolutely brilliant. And of course, as he's traveling the world, he's going into these deeper places inside himself because it's not just an external journey. It's also an inner journey as well, which those that follow us and listen to our podcast, Whole Soul School and Foundation, it's very much like the, you know, the brave epic hero's journey that we all make in this personal transformation process. And people on a spiritual path might even say the ascension process. So, you know, Lacey, maybe you want to speak to some of the messengers that showed up in this film when he asked that question, what is that voice? What was that voice? Yes, Marie, you know, I loved how he did this film because he basically asked about six to eight questions of a variety of people all around the world, from spiritual mediums to channels to to mystics to psychiatrists and, and neuro uh, neuroscience people. I mean, it was fascinating to hear the different ways that people explained what that voice was right. uh, to Bill Bennett. So, yeah, so he, he if, we, if he asked what is that voice, he asked it of the spiritual medium who basically said that voice is your soul, your mm-hmm. higher self, your inner knowingness, right, a guide within you. I love that. I mean, we've had that experience many times in our life. Uh, he asked a, a pretty well-known psychiatrist, who said, that voice is your inner voice that speaks to you from your gut. Basically, she talked about the the GI tract and the neurotransmitters in the GI tract that are communicating with the brain, right? And there's a reason that we trust our gut, Mm. okay? And so she spoke about the voice coming from from sort of the gut-brain connection. Mm. And then he went, you know, he went to India and he talked to several uh, spiritual gurus or yogis, one of whom said that when you are in Ayurveda, which I believe is uh, the oneness, basically, with everything around you, communion happens. It's not communication, it's communion. Out of the communion, you hear the voice. Basically, the voice is intuition that is a result of the of the communion of of your energy moving through and into and connecting with the energy of the universe. Thought that was really beautiful. beautiful. Yep. Uh, he asked a neuroscientist about what that voice was, and and not surprisingly, he said that the brain produces frequencies that allow that voice to be heard. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it really depends on who you talk with. Um, there was another yogi who, who is actually known as a living saint in India who says the voice is an inner GPS. Our inner guidance system is what gives us the voice. And he said that GPS stands for God's perfect system. Mm. So, you know, Marie, when you, when you, when you hear all of these people, 
speak about what what is that voice, what I think it, it boiled down to, what Bill Bennett really discovered was that it all boils down to this one word, this one essence called intuition, this inner knowingness. And all those threads that you just described, those attempts to define this, what the definition of this voice, naming it, um, they all have a similar feeling, like they all seem to have a similar core, but, you know, from their training, from their life's experiences, you know, they give it voice, they give voice to that voice through their experience. And, and that's not unlike all of us. You know, we have our understandings of things through our lenses and our perceptions and our experiences. And namely what they are all talking about, and I think a few of those specifically said the word, but they're talking about intuition, right? They are talking about the word intuition. And, you know, from some of the answers and responses he receives from some of these people, it leads to the next question. So he goes on to ask about angels and he goes on to ask about karma and one question leads to the next question. And I wanted to spotlight, you know, as he journeys down the road on this path to answer these questions and to discover what that personal guidance system really is. The next question becomes, how does intuition work? It's a great question, right? And of course he interviews and asks a lot you know, more people, that same question. And there's a woman named Sadvi Bhagawati Saraswati. And I loved her response. She says, all of the problems in this world begin with what we see with our two eyes. I see something that makes me angry. So I act out of anger or I let the anger fester within me. Either way, damage. So the solution is we also have a third eye. And that third eye is what we call the Agya Chakra. This energy center is what we call the third eye. It's the chakra of discrimination. And I think it might have been also another messenger. I, I, in my notes here, I might be getting things a little scrambled, but someone said it's the command center. When you give this command center commands, Things happen so beautifully. The whole life becomes grace. Somebody else said it's the energy center for intuition, this third eye, right? And I believe that uh, Lee Carroll, who channels Cryon, he said intuition is when the bindi mark lines up with the pineal gland in the brain. It's the window to the soul. And it happens through messages and awarenesses and voices and feelings and it becomes our intuition, right? And I believe it might've been James Von Prague who also, you know, jumped into some of those questions where we're still looking at how does intuition work? And he says that coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous and that synchronicity is the dance of the universe. I love that. Right? And then Carolyn Mace also talks about intuitive hits and said, God is in your DNA. It's the nature of your nature. And so there are many, many understandings of intuition, what that voice is, whether it's in our gut, whether we feel it, right? Whether we hear it, it comes through our senses in some way, shape or form. And I I think if I can jump in here just really quick, Marie, as you say that, because when when I feel intuition and I feel it in the way you just described it, the one thing we have to also highlight is that it bypasses the intellect. It bypasses the ego. Right. And that's, you know... It's coming from a higher source. Whatever you believe that source to be, it's a source, you're exactly right, that does. It goes around or it bypasses the mental mind and the limitations, really, of the way we see the world just from a, a pretty down-to-earth perspective and a logical perspective and expecting life to be linear um, and, and trackable and researchable. 
that voice that saved his life, you might say, defies logic, right? Which is what took him on the quest in the first place. Exactly. And I think, you know, for you and I, in our journey that we've referenced many times, that was the big catalyst that led us on to this, you know, hero's journey that we've been on now for close to at least 20 years now, it, it initially activates where you learn to listen to this higher self. James von Prague used a lot of the language of your higher self, maybe your soul presence, you know, a deeper, wiser you. Um, and, you know, we can talk about listening to the universe. We can talk about listening for signs. or But there is something that activates where we're listening to something with a broader perspective of who we are than our minds really know about us. And that is that bigger picture perspective, that oneness, that communion with a field of energy that knows what's best and highest good for us. And, and it can even know future time to some degree. It can know that that I can't remember which which person spoke to that it might have been one of the scientists that was talking about it can even know ahead of time like what was about to happen with that truck that ran the red light for Bill Bennett it's aware somehow into the far reaches of time that our minds can understand and if that higher self if that guidance system wants to head that off at the pass it can and it can get our attention if we're willing to listen and you and I journeyed through some experiences where we we needed to have it was out of necessity oh I was out of survival it was out of survival that we activated our ability to listen to what he calls the personal guidance system I think we've known it as our inner GPS our intuition our higher selves our connections with the universe and you know whatever language makes this more comfortable for people listening to this podcast you can call that whatever you whatever you want. Yeah, I mean I think for a lot of people a gut feeling is is what it is, right? right? Exactly. Or synchronicity. Right. Or something that was just very synergistic that happened today, right? And so when we learn to trust it because that's something else that we'll bring into this conversation. If he didn't trust or if he didn't listen to that voice, it would have had a very different outcome. And that's, you know, can be an extreme example. Bill Bennett's example of listening to that voice saved his life. So I not only want to bring into this conversation that it can be about big decisions, but our intuition and our inner guidance system and our gut and our communion with spirit and with the, the energy, the one, the, the one field, the energy field all around us can help us in the everyday small choices that we make. And so I want to talk about initially, I would say, you know, our intuition, but mine really activated on a really deeper level. And I can speak to that. It helped us to survive some of the traumas that we were dealing with in our life and find solutions and pathways out of that trauma, which can only be described as miraculous. So we know when intuition can create miraculous change in our lives, but it can also create daily guidance. It it can be a daily guidance system, you know, about everything. And I use it about everything that I do now. I listen to my animals differently. I use my intuition to hear our, you know, what all of their needs are. And when one is just slightly off, I can detect something in an, an illness or where they're not quite right you know, just with like a, one degree of a change because I have not only have those skills naturally, but I've practiced them. I appreciate them. I, you know, expand them and I, I value them every single day. But, and I do it when I go to the grocery store. I hold one tomato in my hand and another tomato in my hand, and I, I'm listening for which tomato is meant for my family. Not everybody does that, but it's so it's such a natural part, an extension of myself that knows more for me than my mental mind knows. And so I do intuitive shopping, basically. I do <laughs> intuitive listening about everything. You do intuitive finances. <laughs> I do intuitive finances. I actually do intuitive editing. When I'm working and I make these videos and I, you know, I, I only have a certain amount, especially for a blog that I put out every two weeks. And I have about 
you know, just a couple of hours to edit a couple of hours of footage. You know, that might take somebody 12 months to edit a couple of hours of footage. I have about two or four hours to do that. And the intuitive editing process that takes over, there's this guidance system of just knows the right vibration, the right clip, you know, and how that gets put together. It's amazing. And we're in the process of making a documentary film. And I'm trusting that intuitive guidance system, that inner guidance system, that daily guidance system to lead that process in that project. And when the intuition guides things, it's, it far exceeds what our human selves could ever create. And a lot of people who are innovators, entrepreneurs, you know, there are many people, scientists in the world who have embraced the gifts of that, you know, that intuition inside themselves and made far bigger discoveries than they could have made on their own. Because when you have access to this infinite universe and you're tapped into that field of incredible energy, you know, the whole world is at your fingertips. You know, there's nothing that you really don't know. You know, it's, it's an extraordinary feeling and that can be about your own safety. It can be about your health and well-being. It can be about your finances. It can be about where you are meant to be geographically living. It can be about a job, a partner, you know, there's something so sacred and so miraculous about tuning into this guidance system. And, you know, we're so fortunate that people like Bill Bennett have these experiences and choose to share them with us, you know, choose to go on these journeys and make these films to illustrate for us a journey that not everybody can go off to India and meet with these amazing spiritual teachers or go to Bhutan or go to Italy. But yet we just journeyed through that field of oneness. Lynn McTaggart is really great talking about that. I don't know if it's just coherence, but that there's, I think she talked about, because I just talked about it in a different podcast, this coalescence of energy. You know, there's this coalescence of energy where we can access the gifts and the talents and the insights of other people's intuition and feel as if we have journeyed the world. And his film, it's like you travel the world with him. You go on this journey with Bill Bennett. And, and we get to see that in a lot of other films that we've debuted here in some ways at Whole Soul School and Foundation. You know, we, we get to learn from other people's experiences. And clearly all the teachers in this film have all had some of their own journeys uncovering and accessing their intuition. And it's the most, I just can't say it enough. It's the most exciting thing in the world. And I think it's James Von Prague that talks about it. I can't remember his exact words, but he's saying, you know, it is a magical experience when you connect with this energy. And, you and, know. and, and I think it's important to say that, that we all, this is, this is almost like, dare I say, our divine birthright. You know, every, every one of us has this ability to, to connect to the unified field uh, and to have mm-hmm. to tap tap into this inner guidance system. Oh my gosh! Painters paint with it. Composers compose with it. You know, people who've let go to that bigger, bigger vision for their talents and their gifts are the ones that experience more joy. And we're all wired to tap into this energy field. We're all t- wired to tap into that higher self inside us. But it is a journey sometimes to give ourselves permission. Some of us need a catalyst. Some of us need a life-threatening catalyst. And some of us have the opportunity to just make the choice to choose it and to play around with it. You know, and if somebody's not feeling anything particularly catalytic right now, you can just play with it. And you can, everybody goes grocery shopping. Everybody has to, you know make choices in their life. And you could ask your higher self, you can ask your soul, you can ask this inner guidance system, you can ask the field of oneness, you know, guide me in, in my day today. Should I go running or should I go back to sleep? You know, should I, you know, what's my next action step today? And then you have to listen, you know, so we, I brought up trust And also listening is another key part. Just because you know what it is, what is that voice, and then you have the language of intuition and an inner guidance system, and then you have an understanding of, in some ways, from some of these teachers, how how it works, right, from their lenses of perception. 
But another question is, how do you let it in? Well, and how do you cultivate it? You how know? do you cultivate because it? Because I think, I think in Bill Bennett's case, he had a he had sort of a drastic experience that was very out of the realm of his norm. He had this this moment in time in which he clearly heard a voice that that helped him or prevent his death, basically. Um, and it was probably so shocking at some level that he had to figure out where did that come from. Well, he had no explanation for he it. He had no explanation. Nothing from this world could explain that experience, and yet he had it. So he knew he had that experience even if other people, you know, who, who might have heard the story, they might have said, that's crazy. It's just luck. I mean, it's amazing that you were spared that day. But he knew something different. He knew something different that he knew he heard that voice and he followed it. And he followed that and he, you know, accepted the quest basically to discover what it really was. But as you uncover the gift of intuition, there's also this learning how to let it in, learning how to cultivate it, yeah. like you're saying. Yeah. And not only cultivate it, practice it, but trust it and listen to it. And it is over time, over many, many experiences that I've learned, I can't imagine making any decision in my life without it because it sees the bigger picture for me. It, it knows what, who my heart is and it knows what my life is meant to be. And it knows there are these two words, the highest good. It knows my highest good for me and for our family. And when you can, you know, rest in the trust of what that is and it can lead your life, that's where you enter more joyful life get, gets to be a lot more fun in the hero's journey versus at the beginning, many of us are just getting by. Many of us are just doing time or passing time. And when you, you know, intuition is very much a part of being a conscious creator in our lives. And we've brought that theme up many times before. So we are learning how to engage this skill in our lives, this gift that we all have. And we just, we wanted to bring attention to that in this conversation in this month at Whole Soul School and Foundation in our fireside chats, but also in our social media posts. Um, it's a powerful energy. It is, and I, I, I'm, I'm at risk for, for taking us in a little bit of a different direction, or maybe we will close out with this. But, you know, at the same time we can learn to cultivate our intuition, we also need to become aware of shrinking our ego. And because remember, intuition bypasses ego. It bypasses the intellect. And the smaller our ego and the smaller kind of role our ego plays in our life, the, the more room there is for the expansion of our intuition. And, you know, I'm somebody who, who I think has had more experiences like Bill Bennett. You're somebody who it's, it's every day, it's everywhere. It's how you move through the world. And for me, I, I have more kind of defined moments of hearing that voice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, just as an example, I remember briefly that, uh, when probably one of the first big defined moments for me was, I remember we were in a, in a very kind of depressed, dark place, kind of dealing with all we were dealing with in our life. And I just did not know how we were going to sort of survive and move through it. And I was driving past our local dump. And I know I've probably told this story before, but I was, I so clearly heard this voice stop at the swap shed at the dump. And I, I was like, why do I need to go to the dump? You know, and I'm, I'm consumed with, you know, thoughts of how I'm going to move on with our life and what decisions we're going to make as a family. And it, this very clear voice said, stop at the swap shed, stop at the swap shed. So I listened and I pulled into the swap shed and the only thing in the swap shed was a, was a bookshelf. And on the bookshelf was about 75 books about basically how to listen to your intuition, how to heal your life, how, what questions to ask to move forward, how to create a vision, right? And all free. All free. Yeah, no. And all you I, had to do was pick up, you know, I first, picked up the whole enchilada, the bookshelf and, and all 75 the books. books. The whole library. Right. And I put it in the back of our minivan. Thank God I was driving that, which was also a rare event. <laughs> Um, right. And I brought and, those home. And these are portals. This is, and that became a portal for us in a way when whenever we weren't sure how something was going to come to us, often it did show up <laughs> right. at the swap shed. It just because also we learned to value it and trust that and and th 
things would show up for us. It was just the way that the universe, it's like we had appointments, you know, right, or, right. <laughs> you know, it's the place of the exchange. That's right. where it happened. Right. We're going to pot, we're going to operate this through the portal <laughs> right? Uh, for you. Right. They wanted to give us whatever yeah. guidance it was, a resource or tool. Right. And often it came, came from there. And, but you have to have the ability to listen to that voice. Right. And that seems to be how it came through. It came through a nudge and, and a clear instruction, a guidance, a voice that says, you know, drive your car here yeah. now. Yeah, I've had a lot of those. I've had a lot in the car. Um, so, you know, I think you and I just sort of live in this in this flow. And I feel so blessed to uh, to be tapped into intuition in, in the different ways that we are, are very complementary mm. with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so grateful that, that, that Bill Bennett could travel the world and make a movie like this and, and get some of the um, opinions and beliefs and theories and philosophies from some, some really wonderful people around this subject. Well, and I, I feel I want to go back. To, maybe we want to close out with this, um, is that one of the speakers in the film talks about that communion with the energy field, right? That communion and connection and communication system. And I think when you're tapped into that kind of energy, however you find that you listen, however that guidance comes through you, you also begin to trust that everything's unfolding perfectly, you're not missing out on anything. You're not too no, late. Absolutely. You're not ahead of time. Right. That guidance system, as you begin to trust it also, you feel like everything's right on time. Right. <clears throat> Everything comes to me at the perfect right time. And I know what I need to know when I need to know it. And I, I meet the people I meant to meet. And everything is, you know, synergistically and synchronistically lining itself up for me to live my best life and the best version of my life and my highest good. And I think that Bill Bennett did an amazing job following that voice, following the questions, making this film intuitively, which sounds like that was a step out of the box that he normally lived in. And, you know, I'm curious to see where else that's going to lead him on his path. And I have that same curiosity about my life. Every day we wake up and we know that new guidance awaits us, right? New connections that are going to be synchronistically aligning themselves. And all that we need is showing up for us And yes, I do think it's important to draw attention to that cultivating, trusting, listening. And sometimes in our busy lives, we just don't make time to have this connection, to listen a little bit more, uh, you know, in a more attuned way or keenly to what this guidance system is. And, And I know that James von Prague, I think, is the one in the film that talks about making just five minutes a day you know, spending time in nature or just making time to get still so you can hear that voice, right? So you can start to connect and commune with that voice. And when you have that experience, there's a peace, there's a grace, something happens within, a grace happens inside us when we align with this higher soul sight or we align with um, what the one teacher was talking about. We have our two eyes, but we have our third eye and our third eye is this guidance system from her lens of perception. And that's where the perfection flows. So if you're listening to this and this is maybe the first time you're hearing some of this information, or even if you're, you know, a veteran of the journey, there's still this call and summoning because in our busy lives, the way the world is, it's easy to not even make five minutes a day. It's easy for us to get so distracted by other things that we don't make that time. But the richness of our life, when we make just five minutes a day, the universe hears that we're valuing that. And when the universe is, you know, it's like a light bulb pops up, you know, on the grid of, you know, spirit and the cosmic world, and it can see that there's someone's getting activated and wants communication and wants that connection and that communion. And then the guidance begins to stream through easier and you don't have to work so hard to get around your ego. It's right there. Yes. Right. And so I want to thank you, Lacey, for joining me in this conversation. I want to thank Bill Bennett for uh, making this film, for following his guidance system. 
you know, in many respects, you know, from listening to stop his car, but also to follow this journey around the world and to bring these jewels of wisdom back to all of us. And if you're interested in watching this film, you can rent it, you can stream it online directly from his website. And I believe that is pgsthemovie.com. And, you know, we look forward to journeying with you each month. And we've got a few more months left in 2020 and a lot of energy is flowing around the planet. And so I'm sure we're going to have a lot more to talk about. And we do. We have some more project, a big project that's coming and some new things that we're percolating with for the nonprofit and the ways that we're going to continue to bring these messages and to support people are re-entering society um, after having experienced a literal incarceration. So um, we want to invite any of our listeners to consider making a donation to our nonprofit. You can visit us at wholesoulschoolandfoundation.org. And of course, you can also see our videos at on YouTube at Whole Soul School and Foundation. And we're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So you can visit with us in a lot of different ways. And until next time, we send all of you blessings. Have a great day.